Well, considering that I was opening up this discussion, I thought I would focus mo mostly on trying to um, answer that question of whether, now that we're talking about inclusion, whether it's a buzzword, like uh, it has, uh, it was in, in, in the title and it was um, in one of the main questions and then uh, setting the, the, the framework for a later discussion. And uh, like I said when I introduced myself lately, I've been working a lot on what's going on with the new um, development agenda and comparing what happened with the MDGs and what will eventually become the Sustainable Development Goals and the, and the new development agenda. And 15 years ago, when one sees the original Millennium Declaration, inclusion was not part of the discussion. Uh, the focus was on poverty and understanding what was going on uh, in that aspect. Now the SDGs and the Open Working Group has just launched just a couple of months ago its first uh, discussion document. Inclusion is just uh, as important of a word as sustainability in this agenda. Um, five out of the 15, uh, out of the 17 goals in this agenda include uh, the word inclusion from growth to cities to institutions, um, inclusion is right there up in the, in the agenda. So I think it, it, is a, it is a buzzword. And as a buzzword, it, it's valuable to look at it um, more deeply on what it means and then hopefully um, with you all to see what it, it entails in terms of uh, ICTs and its role in development. So how I've seen it is that um, Social inclusion uh, has evolved as has our perception on what poverty is and what development is going from uh, a vision focused on the individual uh, to one focused more on society. I think that first and how the MDGs were, were portrayed, poverty was something that happened personally, something that was an isolated phenomenon uh, that would be uh, an occurrence of history that would eventually get alleviated. And that's a word that was very also uh, used a lot in, in when discussing poverty and the original MDGs. Uh, as development practitioners started uh, coming uh, with concrete projects to work with communities, other terms uh, came up like social capital, social uh, cohesion, community-based development, and they were more uh, broader in terms of bringing the community as a whole uh, into play. But still, the focus was on the poor communities and certainly about uh, what they can do to kind of like lift themselves out of poverty. Um, maybe uh, the initiatives uh, of telecenters within the ICT for the realm portray this, this perspective of empowering communities. Um, but then comes the concepts of social inclusion and exclusion, which are probably the broader so far in terms of including the broader society and um, clearly portraying how uh, poverty uh, cannot it exist in the context of others who are rich. And it's relational in nature. And um, in this context, um, probably uh, the concept of knowledge society within within the ICT for the round is uh, the most interesting because it, for me, it kind of portrays what uh, we think that inclusion would mean or what's that ideal of the inclusion that we have. Um, so although I think there's a, there's a progression of what social, of how we've come to see uh, uh, pro uh, the problems of poverty evolving into social inclusion, exclusion, and including a uh, broader um, perspective on society, there are still some issues with this, uh, with this concept. Um, for one, sometimes it can seem very black and white. Either you are included or you are excluded from, uh, from uh, a given situation, access to technologies, or whichever other topic we are, we are discussing. But many times um, the issues are on adverse inclusion or participation and how uh, becoming part of a given system is not done properly. I think maybe 
um, when one imagines uh, urban slums might be a good picture of this when you, th you think, well, being in the cities, uh, cities are, are known as hubs for innovation, for technology, for growth, but maybe if you are in a slum, it's not the same participation as others that might get a uh, better benefit of being in the, in, in the city. Um, also, a focus on inclusion usually, um, when one reads a lot about, uh, when it's used, especially in policy, it's about um, bringing those that are uh, left behind into the, into the mainstream. And even the, the high-level panel report on the next development agenda, which was uh, one of the first documents, used this wording of leaving no one behind. So it's that concept of uh, pulling people in, in, into the mainstream um, development process. Uh, but that leaves probably less focus on exclusion and how is it that um, the systems that are already in place exclude others from participating uh, more actively. And um, since now it's a buzzword, there are so many policies that governments put forward that are considered to be in, for inclusion that it's, uh, it really leaves the space to wonder uh, who benefits from these inclusive policies. Uh, here we have uh, policies that range from uh, um, uh, positive uh, selection, how do you say that in English, I forget. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. To just universal policies, uh, universal access to education and such, all, like, all those broad uh, policies are labeled according to different governments as inclusion policies. And it um, does leave the question on who benefits from, from these when inclusion is used just as a buzzword around different policies. Um, within the debate of the next, uh, the post-2015 agenda, and probably a year ago, there was a big uh, discussion, and especially coming from NGOs, about being stronger about not including only social uh, inclusion in the agenda, but talking more clearly about inequality. And inequality in itself also has its issues as a, as a term. It has many times focus uh, only on income. So we are used to hear, hearing about the, the Gini coefficient and having that perspective on inequality. But I think that it adds to the concept of social inclusion in the sense that it allows for um, not so black and white perception of inclusion or exclusion, but a wide range of, uh, of possibilities. And uh, the inequalities uh, encompasses all those differences. Um, at the same time, inequality may better reflect the fact that the Matthew effect that sociologists refer to it this way, which is when uh, the, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, which is what we keep seeing uh, with, you see this in many complex systems, not only in income, you see it in research, you see it in a lot of uh, network analysis that shows that that gaps keep, uh, keep getting wider. And then in that context, you do wonder to what extent inclusion is the word and the concept that we should use to the social change we are seeking to, to achieve. So um, I think that uh, it's usually, and even within, within, um, uh, within uh, activists is probably more, more uh, uh, there's more ease on using the word uh, of inequality, but it's probably not something that is used as much on policy or uh, research environments. And I think it would be interesting to, to be using it and applying it uh, much more. And uh, my last comment would be that um, when, we are, when we're thinking about uh, this social inclusion and exclusion or this uh, wide range of possibilities uh, of differences in, in, in inequality, and especially when it comes to ICTs, um, 
in, in many cases, uh, we as researchers see ourselves outside of all these uh, occurrences. And we're seeing tools, uh, ICTs are something very distant that is used on development when we are actually being part of uh, the system and the use of technologies, either to keep uh, widening the gap between us who are included in this system and those who, who are not. So um, that would be my final point to, uh, I'd be interested to hear more in the following uh, discussions about our own selves and how we are participating in this uh, ever-growing differences between those who have access and who are not acknowledging the fact that we are among those who are included and we might be having practices ourselves that are excluding others. So that's, that's all for me. Okay. Thank you very much.